Alright, in this video I want to talk about powers of complex numbers. In other words, what happens when a complex number z is raised to the nth power? Well, if z is equal to x plus i y, then it follows that z to the power of n is equal to x plus i y to the power of n. And to evaluate this, I would have to perform binomial expansion. So x plus i y to the power of n is equal to the sum from k is equal to 0 to n of this uh, thing I call n choose k times x to the power of n minus k by i y to the power of k. And now this n choose k factor here is the binomial coefficient for the kth term. And if I was to write this expression in expanded form, I would get x to the power of n as the first term plus n c1 x to the power of n minus 1 by i y plus n c2 times x to the power of n minus 2 by i y squared plus n c3 by x to the power of negative, sorry, n minus 3 times i y to the power of 3 and so on. So as you can see, depending on the degree n, this can be quite lengthy and it would be quite tedious to evaluate. Being powers of complex numbers in Cartesian form is not very efficient. We can do a lot better if we convert to polar form. So if we write z is equal to r cis theta. So let's first evaluate z to the power of 2. So z squared is simply equal to z by z and I can write this as r cis theta by r cis theta and this I can simplify to r squared cis theta plus theta. Okay, so this is simply applying the law of multiplication of complex numbers in polar form. And if you don't understand how I just came to this, uh, please refer to my previous video. So then this simplifies further to r squared cis 2 theta. So I can see a bit of a pattern here already. But just to be sure, let's go with z cubed. So z cubed I can write as z squared by z, which is equal to r squared cis 2 theta by r cis theta. And again, using the useful multiplication formula for polar coordinates, I would get r cubed cis 2 theta plus theta which is equal to r cubed cis 3 theta. So note the power and the coefficient in front of the angle. And let's do another one just for good measure. So z to the power of 4 which I can write as z cubed by z which equals z cubed cis 3 theta by r cis theta which equals, so the powers multiply to give r to the power of 4 and the angles add so I get 3 theta plus theta and of course I'll get r to the power of 4 cis 4 theta so then it follows that z to the power of n would be equal to r to the power of n by cis of n times theta. 
So this is obviously a lot more easy to convert back to Cartesian form than trying to figure out what all of these come to if we had a predetermined index or a predefined index I should say. And I'd like to point out that this, this n theta, is what we call de Moivre's formula. or de Moivre's theorem. And de Moivre's theorem simply says cis theta to the power of n, which I can also write as cis of n, cis of the nth power theta is simply equal to cis of n times theta. Okay, so let's do an example. In a previous video we found that the square root of 3 minus i is equal to 2 cis negative pi on 6 in polar form. So let's find z to the power of 9 and express it in Cartesian form. So according to the formula above, I have 2 to the power of 9 by cis times negative 9 pi on 6. Okay, 2 to the power of 9 evaluates to 512. And if I write cis out fully, I get 512 outside of cosine negative 9 pi on 6. And 9 pi on 6 will simplify to negative 3 pi on 2 plus i times sine of negative 3 pi on 2. So all we have to do now is to evaluate this cosine and the sine. And to do that we can use the help of a little unit circle. So if I go anti-clockwise, here I have 0, here I have negative pi on 2, here I have pi, and here I have negative 3 pi on 2. So the cosine of negative 3 pi on 2 is 0 because we're at 90 degrees, or we're on the vertical, and the sine of negative 3 pi on 2 is equal to 1 because again we're here on the vertical. So this evaluates to 0, and this evaluates to 1. 1, which gives us, in the end, 512 times 0 plus i times 1, and of course that is equal to 512 i. So it works out to be a pure imaginary number, and I think that is a pretty cool result considering where we started. So I hope that this video has been useful to you in understanding how to apply the power of complex numbers. Please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for further tutorials to help you with your maths. In the meantime, good luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.